It may be snowing outside, but inside it's nice and toasty. So let's get down to building another kit, shall we? In today's battle against cabin fever, we are going to build Cooper's Alley by Imagine That Laser Art, also known as ITLA scale models. Today's kit is Cooper's Alley, a three-way industrial kit, configurable three-way industrial shallow relief structures, laser etched, and hardboard construction. This three building kit assembles in multiple variations. Three individual buildings can be arranged across the integral foundation in the order you choose. Now I received some sample Rapido airbrush ready paints a few weeks ago. And ever since then, I've been trying to paint with my airbrush as much as I can. I didn't want to have any stroke marks on the outside of the building, so I decided to use my airbrush to paint this building. And you know, you don't really get to see too many people using an airbrush in their modeling videos, so I aim to be different and let's get at it. Now I like to drop an important tip in most of the videos I make and in this video I'm gonna tell you how I make my homemade thinner now now that the paint industry has moved to water-based paints it's became much easier to be able to make your own homemade thinner for your airbrush and the way I do this is I get 49 percent distilled water 49 percent 99 percent alcohol and 2% glycerin oil. That glycerin oil is important because it adds a lot of flow to the thinner itself. The glycerin also battles against the hard emulsion that is created between acrylic paints and alcohol. Check it out for yourself. So I'm using Vallejo Deck Tan to paint the upper portion of our structure and the bottom portion I'm going to be painting it with with our hardware store mixed version of aged concrete actually I just said that backwards I do often say things a little bit backwards I started by painting with my aged concrete then taped off the section that I wanted to stay aged concrete then painted the rest of the building deck tan. The facts. Now I hail from London, Ontario, Canada. The birthplace of Labatt's Blue. Actually, funny story. A great uncle, through marriage, uh, kidnapped John Labatt and took him up north to a cabin and held him for ransom. Uh, that's a family member through marriage. No blood involved there. So ever since I've been a wee lad, I've been looking at those Pilsner bottles of Labatt's Blue and sneaking myself some drinks. So this model today, although it's going to be called the Cooper's Ale Company, it's going to be Labatt's Blue inside me mind. These window pieces I like to paint them with spray paint because spray paint is a little bit thicker. It's got a little bit of an enamel uh, finish to it and it gives your uh, very delicate window pieces, uh, munions basically, more substance, makes them stronger. Sometimes the laser can burn these to smithereens and the paint is all you've got to repair them. Not saying that these were bad, just giving you a tip. These were great. Actually, uh, the newer ITLA kits have been getting better and better and better. All the old complaints are gone in my books. Using some reefer yellow, we painted the stairs a safety yellow kind of color. Then. I added some dark gray to the middle of the treads to 
add some foot traffic to it. We don't want it to be a perfectly yellow painted staircase. Like if it's perfectly yellow, put a rope across saying stay off, fresh paint. We stuck the windows on with two-sided carpet tape. It's the best stuff really to tape acetate to stick to wood. One of the greatest things about hardboard kits is that it's really easy to glue them together. You really don't have to worry about bracing them. And everything's perfectly square, so it all works together like a finely machined tool. What's not a finely machined tool is trying to paint these bottles with a marker. Use a small brush. The marker doesn't work at all. Thankfully, it all blends in when you put them in the loading dock. We'll paint the pilasters later. It's time to move on to the brick buildings. Now, once again, I got some Rapido airbrush ready paints and I'm using those paints directly on these buildings to get them a unique color. First painting the buildings boxcar red, number one, and for the larger brick building, I'm going over the boxcar red with slag brown. I wanted to give the color a real brownstone look. Hey, wait, you're not telling me that you're going to give us another technique, are you? Oh, come on! Yeah, but this one's a little bit harder. It takes a bit of a song and dance to get to the actual application of the technique itself. And heck, maybe there's a much easier way to do all this stuff. Maybe you just have to get some talcum powder and do this. But how we got to this technique has a bit of a story. Last summer, summer 2016, I started using Liquitex Ultra Matte Medium. And I, one of my other substances I work with is soapy water to uh, thin stuff out or wash stuff off. You know, I'm, I'm using it all, the, or I used to use it all the time. Except after using the Liquitex uh, Ultra Matte Medium and my soapy water together a few times, I noticed that it was leaving this stark white, I don't know what it was, it wasn't a paint, it was kind of like a sand or, or some kind of substance that just was there. And so I started using it for mortar joints in these brick buildings. Now, the way to get your talcum powder to come out of the Liquitex medium, Ultramat medium, is actually the song and dance because we might be just get just need to get talcum powder for this and mix it with some water. However, the way I got it out of my matte medium was to put it in a cup of water and put some dish soap in it and start swishing it around with a brush. Sooner or later, the talcum powder or the powder, whatever powder's in this stuff, settles to the bottom of the glass. Now, what I've been doing is I pour off the excess water after it settles. Then I just add straight water to it and agitate the water up with a brush and brush it right onto the building. This talcum powder floats down into the mortar joints. And this is uh, where you really want your kit to have a nice mortar etched line. You want to have somewhere for the water to settle into because if it doesn't you're going to get the powder all over the face of your bricks which is going to ruin the effect. The same thing that all oh, watery paint does to these buildings and we don't want to have that old school technique that doesn't work at all in my opinion. We want to have something new and that the real benefit of using this powder to fall into the mortar joints is after you're done, you can take your clear coat and spray your building and the white stuff stays, man. 
every other technique that I've ever used, the portion where you seal it with clear coat makes it disappear. Now having said all that, I'm still going to add full strength Liquitex Ultra Matte Medium to the brickwork on this structure because I'm still working through this whole idea of mortar and it's, it's not perfected yet but I'm on to something here I know it so I'm painting on the full strength however it really isn't necessary because the smaller building that goes in between these buildings actually you can put it anywhere you want but I'm going to put it in between these buildings was got its mortar with just the liquid version not the Liquitex version let's get it straight now another thing to note is when you paint this on the first time and then wash it off with your soapy water you know you want to go in and sponge off all of the bubbles from your soapy water because those bubbles are also going to add white uh, circles all over your brick. You know, it's, it's a very fiddly technique. However, the result is, 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 is the best I've ever seen. Moving on to the middle structure, there's a lot of deteriorated brick on the wall itself and something that often happens when adding mortar to a brick wall where this pitted brick is also what you get is the mortar fills into that brick area and turns it all white and that's something you really don't want to have because deteriorated brick is still brick it's not white it's red so what I want to do is paint on some liquid masking material to save that portion of wood from being penetrated by our mortar solution. So once again, just to reinforce what's happening here on the middle building, we took the slurry with the murky powder inside the water and just put that plain on the building. We wiped off the excess water. We don't want it to puddle the entire wall because that will color the face of the bricks. And all we want to do is have the water be in the mortar cracks. It's kind of a trick. You'll figure it out. Follow up by putting on your clear coat. Don't worry about it disappearing because it's not gonna happen. But be sure to let your solution dry completely before you do add your clear coat finish. The windows and doors are laser cut on a micro plywood sheet. It's very strong stuff. However, the window munions and things like that are always very delicate because they are the lowest common denominator on the sheet itself. So they can break. So, be careful when removing the parts. One of the big features of Imagine That Laser Art are their fire escapes on their buildings. Like if you're gonna have a city building, it has to have a fire escape, no? And over the years, I've been building them by hand and I'll tell you this, it's much easier to have a jig and they now have a jig in the kit to build your fire escapes. When I first started building them, they weren't always straight and square. <laughs> but now they are. So that's a good thing. And they look great. There are not many fire escapes out there on the market that looks, look to scale like Imagine That Laser Arts. Now it looks like these buildings are all finished, but I gotta say it's not. 
These buildings come with a full array of roof details. You know, you got your air conditioner up top, you have your water tank, because these are beer facilities. Like, where are you gonna get your water? Like, come on, think about it. Actually, our bottling plant has two water tanks up top, and you know, the details up top are very realistic lo looking. And, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to find other kits that have this kind of detail. Even when you have a metal detail that uh, substitutes for the wood, you know, it's, it's kind of a challenge to paint, to tell you the truth. And these wood parts are a breeze to paint, let me tell you. Wood loves acrylic paint. That's just all there is to it. Wood loves it. Whereas metal and styrene and plastic, not so much. Well, there we have it. Another crazy, informative, build review kind of thing for you. This time, ITLA ScaleModels.com, Cooper's Alley. It is a hundred dollar plus kit, but it comes with all the details you need to get this scene done. And it's three structures. And you know, if you really look at the photos, the thin buildings really work for a multi-layered scene. I love them. And the instructions are amazing. They're getting better and better with each kit. Really congratulate Nick for taking this line and doing a great job with it. I want to thank you for watching the video and if you'd like to support these videos please check us out at patreon.com slash Ron Perry. My name is Ron Perry as you might have guessed. Thanks for watching.